welcome Father Sean Ducali. Thank you, Father. You are the director of the Family Life Office of the Diocese of Lincoln, and you've done a lot of work with people that struggle with pornography, addiction, you've worked with individuals and couples and college students, seminarians, clergy probably. Um, we, we have a lot of people coming to us, confession, mm -hmm. they're struggling to get out of this. They realize it's wrong, they've seen the destruction in their life, what are some practical tips we can give them about overcoming pornography? Um, there's really three things I recommend uh, as a foundation. Like one, that they get a good spiritual director that they can be open with and honest with, um, that they're going to check in with regularly, and they can be completely transparent and vulnerable. Mm. Um, to find a group, either a 12-step support group like Sexaholics Anonymous mm -hmm. or a spiritual support group where there are some some other people with experience that can guide them along that path of recovery. Right. And the third thing is individual therapy and mm -hmm. finding a therapist who has training in sexual addiction treatment. Mm -hmm. And in order to really like dig down and get at the underlying, kind of underlying wounds or underlying mm -hmm. causes uh, of their addiction. Right. You know, shame is such a big component of this. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you work with people in overcoming shame? I think the first thing we have to do is to really make it safe for them to be able to tell us what's going on. And, uh, and the interesting thing about people who struggle with pornography is uh, one of the best ways to break through shame is to start to supply the narrative for them. Um, and what I mean by that is kind of calling back to Genesis 3, right? Mm -hmm. Adam and his wife eat the fruit. They're hiding from God. The Lord goes to look for them. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't say, I ate the fruit that you told me not to eat. They kind right. of point to the effects to avoid the cause. Yeah, yeah. And the Lord supplies the narrative for them. Right. You know, he says, so you ate the fruit that I had forbidden you to eat. Right. And so asking curious questions as a confessor or as a spiritual director actually can help to reduce shame. Right. Um, and to just say to somebody, you know, it must be really lonely for you. Yeah. to yeah. be going to confession over and over and right. over again for the same thing. And, yeah. and you've probably gotten a lot of advice and like, you know, pray the rosary every day, make a holy hour every day. I work with a lot of people who do those things, but they're still struggling mm -hmm. and they're still mm -hmm. falling. Mm -hmm. And that becomes very discouraging. Yeah. And despair can set in yeah. in the midst of that. And so being able to receive the information from them Mm -hmm. and communicate them to them effectively that we're able to receive the information from them. Right. Um, I find the parent education that I've started doing in our own diocese has helped to make that a safer conversation for many people. Right. You know, and one of the questions I often ask people is, you know, if Jesus was in the room with you the first time you ever saw pornography, mm -hmm. what would he say? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and oftentimes the answer is something like, uh, he'd be really upset with me. He'd tell me I should know better. Mm -hmm. He'd tell me what I'm doing is wrong. And, uh, and oftentimes, you know, that encounter was when they were 12 years old. Right, you know? right. You know, they were just a kid. Yeah, yeah. And to respond to that and say, you were just mm -hmm. a kid. Mm -hmm. And if our Lord was there with you, he'd be angry at pornography, but not at you. Right. And he would just kneel down in front of you and pull your head into his shoulder and say, I'm sorry that happened to you. Right. And this shouldn't have happened to you. Yeah. I will always love you. I will never leave you. Just over and over and over again. And we get that message too, like in prayer and personal encounter, but also through others. And maybe that's where that plugging into spiritual direction or to other groups can give us that message, hey, we're lovable mm -hmm. and, and that we're not alone. It's truly an epidemic. Yeah. So the average age of first exposure now is between eight and 11. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the newer studies are pushing it down towards eight. Um, by the time uh, kids are leaving our high schools, 90% of boys and something like 60% of girls have been exposed to hardcore pornography. Yeah. The Barna study that came out a couple of years ago that was commissioned by Josh McDowell Ministries and Covenant Eyes says 66% of Christian men and 40% of Christian women seek out pornography at least monthly. Mm -hmm. you know, and so, so it's really not a niche problem in the church. We're not right. talking about a few people. Right. You know, we're really talking about, yeah. you know, the question is how do we evangelize an entire culture? Right. 
and, uh, and preach the gospel into that hypersexualized culture. Yeah, yeah. You know, in a way that calls people to conversion, to completely change their lives, to really entrust their lives right. to our Lord. Yeah. What are some of the practical tips you tell parents that they should be doing with their kids? Uh, the first thing is to make sure that they're filtering their internet at home. Um, it's amazing the number of parents who don't filter their internet at home. I gave talks to a bunch of junior high kids at one of our schools and I asked them how many of you have your internet filtered at home and it was about 10%. Um, and so putting those protections in place. I always recommend people use Covenant Eyes which is accountability software that just lets the parent know what the child's doing online. Yeah. And parents should talk to their children about what they're doing online, yeah. you know, whether it's good or bad, you know, just to be able to have a discussion about, so I saw you were Googling tractors a lot last week, and, you know, <laughs> tell me about that, because, that, you know, you're Lincoln, interested in what it. what about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it might be something else in another area. Uh -huh. um, and then to start conversations about pornography with their children. And, you know, if the average age of exposure is 8 to 11, it's not uncommon that they've seen it somewhere, yeah. whether it's at school or people are talking about it, they're at a friend's house. And I would think too, like having computers like in public areas of the family space and timed periods of use, like nothing good happens after 10 o'clock, is that what they say? Right, so <laughs> if they can, they need to set yeah. up their internet so the yeah. Wi-Fi kicks off. You know, right. But now more and more our kids have mobile devices yeah. with their own 3, 4G connection yeah. and yeah these sort of portable X-rated movie theaters right. in their pockets. Yeah. And the computer in the public area of the house um, is a good step, mm -hmm. you know, as long as all the other stuff is going on. Right. Um, I have a lot of college students who used to look at computer uh, pornography on the computer that's in yeah. the public area of the house. They yeah. just get up in yeah. the middle of the night and do right. it. Right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we back, we'll talk about some of uh, more spiritual things we can do to, to fight pornography. More with Father Sean Kilcally after the break.